Hey there, Karen Valencic here. I am the creator of Spiral Impact, which is a method to master the art of conflict and do it with power and grace. If you are familiar with my work, Spiral Impact, it's really grounded in the martial arts. And typically I, I teach through using that as a metaphor. But today I have another metaphor and I think that you'll find it kind of enlightening. I, I know it just kind of came to me the other day. Physics is physics. And when you think about it, um, you know, my background's engineering and I, I think of conflict actually as a physics, a physics issue in so many ways. And it's all about how do we interact, interact and all that. But if I if I said that we're going to talk physics today, you'd probably say, oh, I don't think I'll, tr I'll tune in. But thinking about physics. Now, I've got a little story to tell you. I have a pair of or a set of wind chimes that I've had for years, and they, they are anchored to the corner of my home. And last summer, I had some construction happening out there, and I had to take the wind chimes down. And I took them, and I... I hung them on a branch on a tree in my yard. And I noticed that I hardly ever heard them, them ring, but I didn't really do anything about it. I just, if they were out there, no big deal. But I kind of missed my wind chimes ringing in the house, but never thinking of it at the same time. And then we had a windstorm. I was looking out my back window and noticed there was this big heap of something um, on the ground. And it looked like a dead animal. And I sure do get my share of possums <laughs> and raccoons around here. And so when I went out and looked more closely at it, it was my chimes, my wind chimes had fallen off the branch and they were in a heap on the ground. Of course, now they weren't making any noise at all. And that's when I actually took the initiative to hang them back, hang them back to the, to the corner of my home. And voila, I started hearing my wind chimes again. And so you might be thinking, what in the world does this story have to do with conflict? And gosh, can you hear my chimes ringing right now? And honestly, I would do this outside, except it's, it's really cold out. <laughs> so I'm going to actually demonstrate this to you. So my chimes stopped ringing because I took away the conflict. The chimes, the melody went away because I took away the conflict. And that is something that I think if you take that to heart, when you deal with your team or other people, your spouse, whoever, you know, think about it's the, it's the conflict that makes things rich and conflict is, is the source of innovation and creativity. And so conflict, I teach conflict a little bit differently because I'm not about getting rid of it. I'm about helping people be productive and innovative with conflict in a way that honors. And that's where the power with grace comes from, which is grace. You know, if you're religious, you could use it as a religious thing. But in my intent on that was really more about honor, beauty, style, finesse. It's, it's, a, it's a lovely thing. Okay, so let's get back to the wind chime. So what, how did I take away the conflict? Well, what happened is when I hung the chimes on the branch, the branch was really springy. And so what would happen, and I've got this little chime that I use in a lot of my speaking engagements, but what happened is I got the striker and I've got the tube. And what happened because the branch was so swingy is that when the wind blew, it blew the branch and it blew the striker and it blew the tube. They all moved in unison together. Every once in a while there was a little clank, but, but there wasn't any, any conflict because they were all in unison. And as we are in this time of um, doing a lot of virtual things, and certainly there's a lot, of, a lot of conflict in our culture right now, more so than I've ever witnessed in my life, I was even alive in the 60s. <laughs> so so anyway, but but thinking about that, we're just moving uh, moving in these separate but but con you know somewhat connected universes. And and I think that's that's not creating a, a beautiful melody. There's three things that I know and as I was thinking about this that we can actually translate in terms of things you need to have that just right conflict. 
is first of all, you need to have a solid anchor. And, and which means that I need to have a, a, a place that this is, this is hung from. I've got this here and it's anchored and I can ring it. And that might hurt your ears because I'm kind of close to the mic, but, but I, I can ring that chime and it makes a, a, a beautiful sound. Um, how does that relate to you? Now, one of the things as I talk to leaders, if we go more virtual, it's a little bit harder to connect. What it demands of us is to be even better at really good communication. How do you get close enough to be able to make that connection where you can make that sound? You know, I've had leaders tell me that after Zoom, Zooming with, um, with your staff can start out to be kind of a fun thing because you get to know people in a, a way that's more personal, more fun. In some ways you get to know them better. But as we, as we move on into this new reality of virtual, which many, many people are not going to move away from, it can get more annoying. I, I was talking to someone the other day and she said, everyone's got new puppies and they're so interested in their puppies, but the puppies are, are running around. And that's when you know that you've got to have some boundaries and you've got to set some expectations. And that could be uncomfortable in an era when people are quitting their jobs. So if finding that just right conflict, how can you have that clear, clear boundary without feeling people feeling like they're being pushed and criticized? That becomes something that's easier for some people and not as easy for others. And, and again, it could be this parallel thing, or it could be the, 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 the other thing I was going to say, we need an anchor. We need to be able to make that connection. We also need to have things, there needs to be freedom. Because if I hold this, if I hold this too, you know, I just get this discordant sound. There's got to be freedom within that. How do you do all that? How, how, how do you, you know, and, and my lesson here is, you know, I could teach you all about conflict, but that's longer than this live stream is going to take me. But I wanted you just to be thinking about the, the chimes and how does it relate to you and conflict? Now, that anchor, as I translate that anchor to, to you as a leader or to myself, I see that as, you know, you've got to have an anchor somewhere. And those are typically your values, your person. And, and in my work, I teach a concept that I call centering, which is really about that internal balance and focus. It's, be, it's becoming the calm in the eye of a storm. And that is an interper that's a personal thing that you develop yourself. And it's really important because if anything, this last two years have shown us is that many things external from us can change and we have no control over that. But having a really strong sense of self is the only thing that you can control um, and, and you can develop that. That's something that I teach people all the time on how to really develop and continue to develop that strong sense of center, which is your anchor learning those skills in terms of, of setting some boundaries, um, having, knowing how to have those conversations that, that, that you can connect. You know, the other thing about the connecting piece in the virtual world too, is um, I've noticed that I haven't experienced this exactly, but I've heard about it. And I've actually even talked to some people that have done this. And that is they create a little video loop and they put it on their Zoom or whatever it is. So it appears like that they're there, but they're not. And so it's that fake connection. And so that's, that's again, we're out here, we're not making the connection. And, and so as a leader, I, I think it's really important. I think it's really important to have virtual meetings where everyone shows up on video. Because if you're, if you're not present there, um, you're not making the connection. And, and so that, and again, people get uncomfortable with that. They might have things going on in their home behind them that they don't want anybody to see or whatever. But if that's going to be part of the new norm, we need to figure out how to do that. How do we not just float on that springy limb 
and not make that connection, that's not good. That's not just right conflict. And then having this damped where I'm so controlled that I don't have, I don't give any freedom. And you, you know, you can certainly think about organizations that want to have everybody come back in house. And there's been a lot of resistance to that. That's maybe an example of dampening, dampening the tube where you get the clank. Another thing is this, if you're overly micromanaging somebody, you get the clank, not just right conflict. And so the just right conflict is, is just, it's, it's that connection. And then there's the sound that comes out of it. And um, there's a lot more to this, but I just wanted you to think about how do you as a team create that just right conflict where you create and you innovate and it creates energy and it actually becomes something that people really are attracted to and want to be involved in. And that's really around mastery of conflict. I don't talk to people about managing conflict because really um, when you manage it, you're trying to get rid of it. It's almost like you're trying to control the uncontrollable. And it's more about how do you master it so that you can, you can really engage in a way that really brings out the best in people. So I want to summarize. Um, I want to summarize just kind of three things about about conflict. You know, just right conflict. It has free expression with a boundary, and that boundary really becomes that anchor. So it's not just flailing in the wind. It's 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 that freedom to express, to be able to make that sound, and it and it's got to have that constraint. Um, Conflict, second thing is if, if, con if things are too controlled, you create discord. So don't do that. And then when there's no conflict, it's just like, and I had a, a friend of mine, I was talking about this the other day, and he said, well, wouldn't that be just like going with the flow? And sure, it is going with the flow. But if you want to create and connect, being separate, blowing in the wind doesn't create and connect. It might be great for the weekend or your vacation. Um, but you know, even if you go, if you go with the flow on a river, there's always those boundaries with it that, that directs where you're going. So that's all I have to say about chimes and conflict. I hope that next, that I hope when you hear chimes, that maybe you think about how you're going about doing things a little bit differently. And if you would like to learn how to master the art of conflict and do it with power and grace, reach out to me. I've got actually, a, a, um, I've actually got a, um, a website, talktimewithkaren.com, talktimewithkaren.com. Um, that's all one word, Talk Time with Karen. Schedule some time. Let's, let's talk either a short phone call or we could do something longer and just explore. There's all kinds of options of how we could work together to help you really have the melody on your team and in your life that you'd like. So thanks for joining me. 